I want you to imagine the feeling of getting on an airplane for the first time, taking off and landing halfway around the world. Everything is foreign to you, but you are the foreigner. You are excited about the opportunity, but there's also anxiety in wondering if you made the right decision. We all have those moments in life where the decisions that have been made either by ourselves or others completely change the course of your future. That decision was made by my parents in the early 1970s when they decided to get on an airplane to move to America, to move to Ohio. They came here on an airplane with only what they could carry, including a young child, me. For the first few years, as we were learning to navigate this new country, we only had one car and that was used by my dad to go to work. I remember many moments when I was young when my mom and I often used local public transportation, CODA, to move around and get to know Columbus. Being able to fly here on an airplane, ride in a car, or take public transit was a level of accessibility and mobility that changed the course of my life. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here right now and I wouldn't be talking about the future of mobility. That glimpse into the early part of my life might be interesting to all of you, but is no way a unique story. Millions of people, some who might be watching right now, have a similar story to mine. Whatever your story is, we can all agree, access to transportation opens the door to opportunity and prosperity. Before we talk about the future, let's talk about the past. The ease of taking an aircraft, riding on a bus, or in a car did not exist before the 20th century. The manufacturing of the car and Henry Ford's creation of the assembly line ultimately and completely transformed the way that we move to this day. Let's put it into some perspective. In the 1890s, more than one million horse-drawn carriages were produced every year, and only a few thousand motor cars were in the United States at the end of the century. By 1916, 2.3 million cars. Car production was expedited with the introduction of the assembly line. Four years later, in 1920, 7.5 million cars and over 1 million trucks. In 20 years, everything had changed. The mass production of motor vehicles changed the way that people worked, lived, and traveled. In the beginning of the 1900s, many people thought that cars were a fad or question if he could really trust humans to drive. Could horsepower ever really replace an actual horse? However, in 20 years, the horse-drawn carriage had become almost obsolete. So think about that for a moment. Imagine if you were in those conversations over 100 years ago, where people discussed the pros and cons of cars versus horses as preferred modes of transportation. What did they debate? What problems were they trying to solve? For example, improve reliability, the ability to run a machine versus depending on an animal. Increase accessibility, places that would normally take hours on a carriage were now more within reach. Improving physical safety and health, horses created multiple accident injuries based on the unpredictability of the horse rather than the consistency of a vehicle. And let's be honest, Cars kept the roads and streets much cleaner than horses. But most importantly, they thought that better transportation would create more opportunities and remove barriers and obstacles for those who lived in their communities. The innovators and inventors of the past knew there must be a better way and focused on transforming transportation. This persistence created new industries, shaped our cities, and our communities and provided options for further accessibility. We can now look back to that horses to car transition and realize that this was a pivotal moment in our modern life today. The disruption of the car changed the world of possibilities. So when we look to the past, what are the problems that we're trying to solve today? We are still trying to improve reliability. How can we ensure that all members of our community can have dependable transportation? For example, if it is not as easy to travel to your medical appointment, you may skip or miss it, which leads to longer-term health issues. 
The American Hospital Association revealed that 3.6 million people miss medical appointments every year because they don't have access to reliable transportation. Or imagine a mom who is combining multiple activities together, such as work, childcare, and household duties into one trip, or called trip chaining. For a mom with a car, this could be considered efficient and time savings. But for the mom who has to pay for public transportation each time, this could mean $50 to $100 more per month due to the multiple trips. We want to increase accessibility. How can we make sure that all parts of the communities we live in are within reach for access to jobs, food, medical care, and housing? In a 2019 pre-pandemic study by Texas A&M showed that the average American commuter spent 54 extra hours a year in traffic delays. By extra hours, they meant extra time spent traveling at congested speeds rather than free flow speeds. The American Public Transportation Association estimates that 60% of transit trips are taken by people of color, those with lower incomes and who cannot afford their own vehicle. This is due to the fact that on average, it takes $9,200 annually to own, operate, and maintain a car. And we wanna improve physical safety and health. How can we improve the safety of our roads and our vehicles? Here in Columbus, a study by Vision Zero found that 50 people die in traffic-related car crashes every year. The study shows that our most underserved communities are impacted the most, including low-income neighbors, people of color, and people with disabilities. And while fewer people are on the highways during this pandemic, highway crashes are on the rise. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says that traffic fatalities rose 13% last year, mostly because of speeding. So imagine that, the same questions, accessibility, reliability, physical health and safety, and improving the communities for our citizens are no different than the ones we were trying to solve 100 years ago. What is amazing about this point in time is today we are at another inflection point. Due to rapid technology changes, this is our horses to car moment. We are more likely to see changes in the next 10 to 20 years than we have in the last 40. We are now living in the moment where innovators and inventors are asking themselves, is there a more reliable, safer, faster, accessible way for all of us to move and connect to other cities and towns? What are the journeys of the members in our community? How do people move? What is technology doing to help with inequalities or lend a helping hand? How can we make sure that transportation can enable and not become a barrier? And what is the customer experience of mobility? How can we use technology to help us? So let me give you some examples of positive innovations that are happening right now. Imagine you are someone that uses public transit every day, but cannot afford the cost of a one-time purchase of a monthly pass. This is someone who needs public transit the most, but can afford it the least. With mobile phones and smart car technology, their account can now keep track of how many rides they have taken and cap it once they've reached that limit and no longer charge them additional fares for the month. To the mom that makes three trips every day to get to work, childcare responsibilities, or household activities, this could save them nearly $750 a year, and perhaps in some cities even more. Imagine driving down that stretch of highway that frequently has accidents. With artificial intelligence, multiple data sources and predictive analytics can be used to study daily traffic patterns and accident frequency and use this information in real time to lessen identification time or predict the probability of when an accident is likely to occur. Las Vegas piloted this technology platform and saw an average of a 12-minute faster response time on incidents in roadways, which means saving lives and clearing up roadways faster. Imagine someone with an auditory impairment or a cognitive disability who has a specialized app that provides them turn-by-turn -turn movement of the public transit vehicle they're riding in to provide additional assistance navigating through town and thus increasing their independence. 
Imagine intelligent traffic management systems that sense that you are in traffic. These systems will sense wait times and communicate with each other to change the speed of movement. Such systems have reduced commuting times in Buenos Aires by as much as 20%, in Houston by 15%, and in Mumbai by 12%. That traffic jam you are in will start to decrease. I believe we can all agree, regardless of beliefs and opinions, that mobility changes lives. It has changed your life and it has changed mine. We can also agree that we want to remove barriers and obstacles so we all can prosper. Access to mobility is one of those basic needs to succeed in life and for some, one of the key barriers to opportunity. And mobility provides a literal pathway to prosperity. The good news is, is that all of these projects are happening in Columbus and in cities around the world right now. And this is just a small glimpse to the changes that are happening in the mobility space. So we are in the driver's seat and we're learning from our past and making smart and innovative mobility decisions that put all people in our communities first. This is our horses to car moment. We will be finding innovative ways to make transportation accessible and equitable for everyone. It means making transit safer, traffic becoming more efficient, providing more modes to our underserved populations, creating communities that are transit friendly, reducing congestion, and making sure that no one is left behind. Thank you.